Hey folks, it's Charles, uh, the product developer at the home of the popular BioBlaster ozone machines, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Mr. Bob Tuscan. Bob is a famous guy. He's got a radio show. He's the, um, producing a new film called Growing Freedom. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Bob about two years ago. And for the last two years, he's built a successful business using the BioBlaster ozone equipment, uh, including mold remediation, odor removal, sanitizing, and some other services. And uh, so, Bob, you know, when I met you, you were just moving into a new house. Why don't you tell the folks, you know, sort of your background, how we sure. got together, how we met, and, and what, it, what it's been like. So it all begins with me working a nine to five with a, a young baby in the house. And we found the house of our dreams on two acres out in the country. And we were looking forward to moving in. It was my first home purchase. Um, and I naively thought that the odors that we observed when we first visited the house could be easily dealt with through painting and ripping up floors a duct cleaning and so on and so forth and quickly did I find out that it wasn't that easy. So this is the industry standard encapsulation. Right, so if you go online and you read from every schmuck out there who says they know how to do it, they have it figured out, you'll quickly find that what people suggest is to put kills, uh, some sort of primer and sealer on the wall, paint, remove flooring. I even went as far as to paint the subfloors with that same kills. And now not only did the odor still exist, but now those odors were trapped behind this paint uh, and anything that I was to do to try to get to the source, to the root of those issues was met with that as a barrier. Uh, so I, I quickly uh, started to do more research because at the end of the day, we had no choice. Our backs were against the wall. I had closed on the house, signed my name on the dotted line, and the wife and the baby said, we are not going in there. No way in heck are we going to that house with those odors. So what is a man to do? You, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. I started researching other means to deal with it and quickly found a cornucopia of literature on O3 or activated oxygen or ozone as many call it and found that it had tremendous potential to remediate the issues that I was facing. So I bought my first machine, not Charles machine. Uh, I just quickly went online and found the first consumer model in a decent price range. It was not, a, it was not cheap. No, it was $500. And uh, it came, I think it was through Amazon or whomever, and I plugged it in, I ran it for two days, I followed the instructions to the T, and thought this is it. And the second that smell of the O3 dissipated, I quickly realized that all of the odors were still present, and that it did next to nothing aside from covering it up for the time being. But it helped. I could tell it helped a little. I just felt as if it wasn't strong enough. It wasn't getting to the point as I continued to research how it worked uh, to reach and achieve shock treatment levels. And you met, you found my machine through another friend of ours, right? Uh, kind of a famous guy with his own uh, radio show. Yeah, so a colleague of mine who does an alternative holistic health show and He's an engineer and a, just a brilliant guy, uh, said, Bob, the reason why this ozone machine didn't work is because you're not achieving the right levels needed to achieve that shock treatment to really remediate on a molecular level and break down those odors. Um, and he said, I found a machine with the output necessary to do this. And the machine he recommended was the BioBlaster. Yeah. The BioBlaster uh, Canon. Sterling. The Sterling. Yeah, Sterling XT. The yeah. Sterling Canon, uh, which I believe pumps out 50,000 milligrams per hour or more. Yeah, absolutely. So this machine, just on paper, far trumped any of the other machines out there. Um, and it was well within the price range per capita to, to justify the purchase of this machine, 
And I took that leap of faith and I bought the machine and sure as heck it worked. Now I, I saw the order come through and I saw the Bob Tuscan radio show and I decided to give him a call to see you know, what, it, what he was into. And uh, that's when he started to tell me that there was a little bit more than just an odor problem. There was actually a mold problem at his house too. So it quickly developed that in addition to the odor issues, which we were able to remediate, we also had a unseen uh, mold issue that was continuing to grow and, and develop. Um, and at that point, um, I was not only in need of a, a machine for odor removal, but I needed to wrap my head around mold remediation and what many of the remediation companies were telling me is the gold standard. Um, but at the same time, because I'm a skeptic by nature and I like to, you know, I'm an autodidact. I like to do my own research. I like to learn for myself. I was very grateful that in addition to producing the best machines that I could find in the ozone industry, uh, Charles was also uh, an expert in mold remediation and quickly found out uh, his credentials, including the fact that he wrote one of the first books on mold remediation, green mold remediation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Holistic. And your, your wife, Bob, is chemically sensitive, uh, like she a is. lot of my, uh, my first early customers. And you know, the way that we wrote the original all-natural mold removal protocol was dealing with chemically sensitive women who are having a reaction to the, the toxic chemicals that are still widely used in the industry. So because of all the disinformation and all of the concern in remediating the mold, I was very grateful that um, we were able to find sound methods of mold remediation that were not only not toxic, but they were far more thorough and did the job exponentially better than what I learned was the half-assed standard of the remediation industry, um, which doesn't utilize ozone in most cases as a, a necessary step, and if they do, they're using the aforementioned lackluster small units, not obtaining the high levels needed to truly remediate mold and break that down. And they don't have anything to kill the root structures, they don't really address the spores, they don't deal with the MVOCs, they don't deal with, with really any of the things that are, need to be permanently eradicated to solve the problem. So there uh, lies um, a marriage uh, between Charles and myself because not only was I applying this firsthand, I quickly realized that um, this was a great potential to obtain freedom aside from my corporate nine to five bureaucracy and, and have a new opportunity where I could be my own boss and I could make money far beyond uh, the salary that was, you know, I, I could grow my, my own personal financial situation. Um, and that all came about and I didn't intend to do this at first. No. Um, I kind of got into this because a friend of mine who's a real estate agent, he called me one day and he said, Bob, do you think you could do what you did for your house for one of my listings? And I said, sure, you know, why not? I had purchased the, the Sterling um, from Charles and at that point it was sitting around and I was, um, you know, thankful to have it and it did its job at the time, but it was just sitting there and my friend said, hey, can you use your experience from having bought this home and dealing with this, you know, plethora of issues for one of my listings? And I said, sure. So I did it. We remediated the odors in this home for my friend, the real estate agent. And uh, a week later, he calls me and he says, Bob, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, not only did you remove the odors from this listing, but literally two days later, this listing received an offer for the full asking price when previous to that we had tons of showings, the house had been on the market for months and not a single offer. And literally the day after you treated it, or two days after you treated it, the place sold. Um, and of course, they attributed to the removal of the odor in the home. 
and he says, why isn't this a thing? Why is this not a service that people are offering? And with my background in marketing and my expertise in SEO and PPC and a whole slew of other you know, business um, techniques that I've learned over the years, I instantly knew that he's right and odor removal services was born shortly thereafter. Now Bob, you uh, almost made enough money to pay for your machine on your first project, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, so when we utilize the equipment and we offer the, the right process and the right understanding of how the equipment works and how it doesn't work, um, not only do we charge a fair amount of money for the jobs that we do, but obviously the ROI for our customer is quickly realized too. Because if it's a matter of selling your home that has been sitting on the market and not selling, and you're you know you're wasting time and energy on that, um, and it's holding up you know your finances, to hire our company to do a remediation is the best money you could spend on your home. If you would spend a dime on putting new granite countertops in your home, if you would spend a dime on trimming your hedges so that they look nice, curb appeal, right? And your house smells, uh, for better or for worse, uh, the best investment you could make would be to remediate those odors. And I feel very um, fulfilled because of that, because not only am I making a great living, but it's a it's 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 a mutual thing. It's it's mutually beneficiary beneficial to myself and my customers. So as a result, I don't feel like I'm doing something that is just for the sake of profit. I feel like everyone's happy. The real estate agents are happy because they're now able to sell a home that's been a problem. The homeowner's happy because they have now been able to sell their home. I'm happy because we charge a fair and honest amount that. Oftentimes beats out the uh, other guys, and that's a whole different chapter to this that I don't want to get into. I have to keep some proprietary info uh, aside here, um, but everyone's happy. And but, but you almost made enough money on your first project to pay for your machine. I did. Yeah, and you own a lot more equipment now. Oh yeah, I mean, so as I continued to grow the business, um, I was able to scale it and purchase equipment as needed. And uh, how many I, cannons are you running now? Bob? Uh, four, seven, uh, a dozen, a dozen. So you got a dozen ozone generators, and yep. you keep them working pretty much every day. Every day, um, if there's ever a problem, uh, Charles and his facility will make good on it. Um, you know, we had some uh, connectors that went bad, no fault to Charles, but more so because my guys were just, they're rough, you know? And, Absolutely. And regardless of whose fault it was, Charles instantly helped us figure that out. It was a quick fix. So that, that right there was the least of our work, the most of our worries rather. Yeah. Um, and nothing out there is so, so you as durable. You mentioned that you're doing uh, homes. Mm -hmm. You've done apartments for property managers. Property managers. Uh, you ever done vehicles? We have done vehicles, yeah. Have you ever done any boats? We've done boats, yeah. So um, you've done some mold remediation following the all natural mold removal protocol. Yeah, we've done some mold remediation jobs. Yeah. Um, you've, got, uh, an you've got offices in uh, north central Florida. Right. And you've got another office that you've just opened up in Austin, Texas. Right. And uh, this business is really, you quit your full-time job, right? Oh, yeah. How many months did it take you to be able to quit your job? Uh, I would say it took about eight months. Yeah. So, so you started, this is a, a business that Bob was able to start on the side. He got into it with a very low, low level investment, just one machine. And then he quickly realized that if he wanted to be able to make more money, he had to have more equipment. More so, equipment, uh, you know, uh, the market uh, required us, you know, the marketing rather required us to build better relationships with real estate agents yeah. um, because they are our best partners. In addition to real estate agents, we work a lot with investors, real estate investors who are flipping houses. You've all seen 
how many people are talking about flips, right? And now that the housing market's doing better again, it's now all the rage again. Um, so, so you did some practical, real low level, hands-on things. You went to some real estate offices and you sponsored their breakfast, right? Got yeah, and some most, donuts. most offices, real estate office will, offices will do a sales meeting and they would love for vendors that will help them in, in doing what they do. They love me because it's intuitive and, and it makes their jobs easier and it, it provides you know, um, work for me and my family. Um, and I just simply bought breakfast for sales meetings at various um, brokers and g gave a five, 10 minute talk about how we can help them. And um, through that, we've built relationships and have not only one-time customers, but repeat business. And you've done some uh, meetings with property management companies, going, just going out, knocking on doors, beating feet, right? I mean, listen, like any other business, Charles, um, it requires work, Yeah, you know? Absolutely. This is not something that you're going to just flip a switch and it's, you know, it's gonna be there in abundance. Um, but in a way, uh, it kind of is, um, but you have to do the work. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, but it was still not something super high tech. Yes, you have a website. You do some online advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, you've made relationships, and you've just basically what I would call the old fashioned American hustle. It's not rocket science, but it's a hustle. A hustle, right? It's a hustle. You got to work at it. Yeah. Um, but all of the tools and everything out there for you to do that are, you know, for the taking. So an average project for you, let's say your cheapest house, what, what would be the lowest price you'd ever charge to do a job? $400. 400. And that's bare bones. Bare bones. And you've done jobs as high as? Well, it depends. Um, you know, thousands, the, right? Thousands of dollars. Yeah, and it, it depends on the different types of problem. You know, if there are cat urine, you've got to do a few extra steps. Yeah, the, we've learned that um, you know it's not a one size fit all solution. That when we're looking at each house, they all have various variables that we might have to tweak our process to appease and to conquer. But all of that can be done, um, and we offer a guarantee with my service. Yeah, you offer a, you know, a guarantee. You guarantee to get it out or, or that you get, they get their money back, right? Well, yeah, uh, and what we found is um, that before anybody wants their money back, if we do not get it done the first time in some cases, um, they want us simply to come back and retreat. And with that, we're always successful. And in two, almost always. In two plus years, you've had to give how many customers? Half a dozen. Money? Half a dozen. Yep. The full amount? Uh, they, no, never. Uh, the full amount on one occasion. So one time. Um, one time, and the customer was didn't have the patience for it. So that it. means out of a thousand projects, you had to give their money back one time. Yep. And other times, you know, where where in that half a dozen where the um, customers weren't fully satisfied, they only asked for a portion of their money back because the vast majority of the job was done so successfully. Yeah. So and these they, are, let's face it, sometimes we have to deal with customers in business that are really uh, picky or very hard to please. But we want people to be happy and that's the cost of doing business. Yeah. Um, so that's quite all right. And, and like I said, out of, you know, the, the numbers are there. The ratio of that is, you know, you can't beat that. So 99% of your problem projects go off without a hitch. Yep. And, um, and so you've said you've done some vehicles, you've done some boats, mm -hmm. you know, how, how did those projects come about? Have you, did you go to the dealerships, establish relationships? So the first, um, introduction to vehicles was, um, when I met a car detailer. And the car detailer, um, he was a local guy in my area, he did a great job in cleaning out cars, but just could not get hard, you know, smoke odors and other hard to get out odors um, removed. So he reached out to me asking for some help on a particular case. You know, he, was, he researched, what do I do? And he found our company and we helped assist him with that job. 
And from that point on, we built a relationship with him for jobs in regards to, you know, smoke odors and other, um, you know, real extreme odors that he comes across in detailing cars. Um, after that, I met a used car dealer who was a, a former colleague of mine, and we did cars for him. So when he gets a car in that's, you know, a trade-in or a used car and it smells, he'll call us up and we'll come by and we'll we'll treat his vehicles for him on a case-by-case -case basis. You've done university uh, residences, you've done yep. regular apartments, full houses. Have you ever done any kind of commercial work? Yeah, so we have done um, several commercial jobs. Um, uh, we did a, a doctor's office. Um, we've done several doctor's offices. Um, we did um, a, um, we had a, a company call us that had a, a facility that they used fish, that they processed fish and they did fried pickles and they had all sorts of odors that uh, were absorbed into these cabinet systems um, and they were desperate to salvage their cabinets uh, and remove the odors because they were moving them into a new facility and they didn't want that facility to stink. Um, so we actually helped them in that process, which was amazing and they were very thankful. And it worked. It worked, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you see, you can see bigger things on the horizon. You told me uh, recently you were looking at branching out into the sanitizing aspect of the business where you're focusing on germ killing and repeat uh, clients? Yeah, so in, in, uh, relations, uh, in relation to the doctor's offices that I just mentioned, um, I was able to explain to them how beyond just their odor issues, which was the reason why they called us, that this system would help to remove any bacteria or pathogens present, um, which of course any doctor's office knows is an issue. And um, as a result, um, of, of that introduction, we started thinking about Charles' uh, sanitization business model to have a reoccurring subscription or uh, agreement where uh, on off hours on the weekend, we come in, we drop off several machines, we sanitize their office, which helps their customers to be more healthy. It um, works great for allergists. Um, who are dealing with customers who are extremely sensitive um, and the list goes on and on. I mean that, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface on and I just know, you know. I, and you already have plans, if I'm not mistaken, to open up your third and fourth office, correct? We're going to open up a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, but don't tell anyone, all right? No, that's all right. I won't give away. Don't tell service. anyone, okay? <laughs> So, um, you were able to fire your boss in eight months. Fired my boss. Uh, I'm lucky I haven't fired myself yet. Yep, you became your own boss. That's right. You've built a successful uh, six-figure income. I'm doing all right. Yep. You're able to um, keep the lights on, keep all the houses paid, get the, keep your car payments up. You're, you're living the American dream. I even have a white picket fence. No, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, you know, for those people that are looking to start a business, um, what kind of advice would you give to someone who is going to start this out, who, who really doesn't know much about it? You know, the, the, Charles provides a tremendous amount of resources, and he's um, a, a great mentor. I don't know how he does it, but he's, I'm surprised his phone hasn't rang during this conversation. You must have put it on silent. I did. Okay, because he's always on the phone, and he's jumping on call to call, mentoring folks to do this. Um, with, with that seniority and wealth and that experience that he has, combined with a basic hustle, as we said before, and um, you know, just common sense business practices and customer service. Anyone can do this, and they can start this and grow this as needed. So they can do this on the weekends to start, and it's and you can 
Maybe do it in the evenings if you're looking for just a little extra cash flow to come in for the holidays or for whatever it might be. Uh, and you can grow it accordingly. And as you get busier, perhaps you, t you dedicate more time. And I, I just, I grew it organically and it all worked out. So have you uh, invested a lot of money in printing? Brochures, flyers, postcards, anything like that? We've done business cards. Business um, cards. We've done some brochures for the realtors when we go and meet with them. But not a tremendous amount. So you, you, haven't even, you haven't even scratched the surface of print advertising yet? I haven't even like print. Uh, My background is in web marketing. Marketing. Um, so I focused mostly on that, which provides you with a little bit more of an instant access to a market, um, but no no, uh, no val packs yet, uh, no serious uh, dollars spent on, on advertising through traditional mechanisms. No TV, no radio, none of that. But yet your phone rings every day. Uh, too much. Yeah. My phone rings too much, um, <laughs> and that's... Um, we're, we're looking to hire, so if you'd like to work for us, uh, give me a call, 1-800-711-ODOR. Uh, that's 1-800-711-ODOR. Well, that's great. That's great. <laughs> that's a real number, by the way. Uh, I know. I understand. <laughs> so, so this is great for people that are maybe have already retired from their primary business and are looking for some secondary income. I can see that. It's, uh, it's a great business for... People that are, are sick and tired of the, the day to daily grind, the nine to five, the kissing their kissing the rears of people that uh, might not be as smart as they are. You can see that. Unfortunately, it, it's an okay. It's a job that's great for for college students. And yeah, you know, uh, I didn't think about that, but that would be you know, a great fit. And so, whether you're looking to make a few extra dollars a week or a month. Or whether you're looking to, you know, go full time like Bob did and fire your boss, um, this business has so many revenue streams. So you, you have you ever thought about doing the biohazard cleanup markets or the bed bugs or, or any of the other things besides the sanitizing? You know, so there it's it, you have odor removal, you have the sanitization for doctors' offices and that kind of thing, as mentioned, uh, gyms. Uh, sports equipment require this ongoing processing yeah, and that's another opportunity there uh, for reoccurring income which is great um, and then you have things like biohazard cleanup and we have through the odor business received calls you know um, you ever clean up a dead body smell I smell? I've received calls so in the state of Florida you have to have certain yeah. requirements and um, I have yet to achieve those requirements necessary, but that's in the works. And um, that process um, is a tough one, but it's a, it's a great business. And, you know, it's per dollar amount um, a great opportunity as well. So um, if you can handle that and you can you know, deal with the uh, gory aspect of that, obviously. And I know with the floods that happened, uh, with the hurricanes that came through, you were actually able to do a lot of uh, actual, you know, mold uh, spore cleanup and odor removal, and, and even a full full blown remediation or two, uh, where they waived some of the guidelines. Yeah. So Florida, you know, after these storms in Texas and all over the country, unfortunately, um, the disasters become the, I guess, opportunity to really help people out that are suffering and de are desperate to get into their homes, and there's no shortage of work for that sort of remediation. Um, and again, I, I feel great about it because we're doing more than ever expected, more than the average remediation company, and so on and so forth. So yeah, we're doing the, the remediation. And then last but not least, the, the bed bugs. Uh, we've talked to hoteliers, uh, uh, pest control operators and others about a, a great opportunity there to help revolutionize the bed bug system with a far more labor um, less intensive, less intensive yeah. right? So it, it, traditional bed bug cleanings are extremely labor intensive. Um, they're not that effective. And Charles has developed through his bed bug, green bed bug solution uh, a great opportunity for anyone out there to have a, a system to truly 
kill off bed bugs and not just. Um, but that takes a lot of gas, folks. You can't oh yeah, no, you're not going to just buy one machine. machine. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. That's why I'm. Uh, that's why I mentioned your system. So you, you yeah. were able to follow the steps the first time you did your own mold remediation. I think I sent you a copy of my DIY mold removal system, right? Yep. And we did it from our own personal house. Yeah, you did it for your own house. Yep. And you followed the steps. And did the mold ever come back? No. Yeah. No. And, and this is, we tested obviously. And you had, you had, I believe you hired a remediation company before that. And it, and it didn't work, is that right? Well, we hired a remediation company to remove the materials and do some of the drywall removal and that kind of thing. And they brought in air scrubbers, which was great. Um, but they weren't going to use the, the method, the aforementioned method that would truly get to the root, prevent the root system of the mold from going back. So I actually worked in tangent with them, yeah. uh, filling in the gaps. So, so this was before you owned your own business. This was, yeah. you were still a nine to five, or it was kind of a, a big project for you. Yeah, no, and I, I actually had to work with them to incorporate Charles real full you know kit and caboodle uh, into their lackluster process so alongside them we you know use the products necessary to get the the root structure um, out of the picture we we utilize the high output uh, o3 machines and so on and so forth yeah and uh, so uh, what would you say is the worst over job you've ever had to do. A cat urine uh, is particularly bad, and you've all seen the shows uh, on television of these hoarders, or at least have read or heard about these hoarder situations. Oh boy, I have seen a few of those firsthand, and they can be disgusting. And it's it's sad. It really is. Um, it's sad. Um, but we've been into homes where they had forty plus cats, and the cats. Uh, repeatedly would uh, mark their territories by spraying the walls and as a result uh, we needed to have some serious uh, intervention um, and remediation done for those homes um, and that wasn't easy I had to learn the hard way on those jobs that there you know needs to be a little bit more effort put into it than just your you know some of the more um, less challenging jobs. And I think you called me up and I, I went through with you the IICRC uh, protocol for urine. You did and we, we figured out that you know uh, part of the process is to identify where that urine is, finding it. Um, you use some other tools for that Bob. Tell, tell the guys that are at home you know some of the things that you've invested in besides the ozone equipment. Not perfect. Um, it, but it, it, it shows up where they've been uh, going potty so to speak. It, it ideally will. I mean, oftentimes we go in and they've already painted and, and created a um, a barrier a barrier them. from us being able to see it. So it's not a perfect science, but it helps for, for us to pinpoint and then treat topically. Urine is acidic. So in order to remediate the odors, you have to neutralize the pH with an alkaline. Um, and that's what we do. Um, so it's treat that. Um, in some cases, remove the materials if it's like an extreme case that we just mentioned. Um, and then, even then, we still have to treat the studs of the home. So if we do a flood cut, removing two feet of drywall because it's just soaked. And that, that is, uh, that's the male cats. That's that the worst there. case scenario with male cats, yeah. But if you're doing something like that, this isn't a few hundred dollar job. No, it, it's a great opportunity, financially. Thousands of dollars. It could be thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, so you'd say cat urine is the worst. Cat what about uh, cigarette smoke? Everyone says, well, can I get cigarette smoke out you know, with I've, the ozone? I've advantage? seen jobs where the people had smoked there for two months and it was relatively mild, um, but yet they still needed professional intervention because it just did not go away on its own through airing the house out and lighting candles. Uh, to jobs where the folks had smoked in there for 40 plus years. So, so, so you're dealing with a 40 year smoker. 40 you know, year smoker. The walls are orange. They're, they're orange. You the ceilings are orange. It's orange. And, it's an orange house. And were you still able to treat that with ozone? Uh, 
there was some other uh, steps involved, um, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, you do. I think you, you told me you invested in some foggers, some foggers yeah. to help uh, you know with some of the topical treatment and that kind of thing. And you're using the new ozone odor neutralizer at the end of the project to knock down that ozone smell, correct? That's right. And But that's basically it. You, you haven't invested uh, much more money into much more equipment. Um, I paid Charles a ton of money uh, for his consulting. He takes at least, what, what do you make from me? At least 20000 a month? Uh, zero dollars? <laughs> that would be zero dollars, folks. Uh, no, I, I ought to pay him that much. I'm, I'm grateful for him. Uh, but no, you're right, Charles. I, it, the equipment uh, in comparison to some... You know, other opportunities. For instance, I was looking at uh, well drilling. Yeah. You buy a well driller. I don't think that's what they call it. A well drilling rig. Or a drilling rig, yeah. A rig. Uh, initial investment on the low end, $250,000. Yeah. Now, it's, it's a business, and uh, your average well that you're going to drill is going to be 5000 bucks. But you can only do so many of those within the period of time. And then in order to repay that investment of that rig, which requires a ton of maintenance and everything else, I looked into it and it didn't make sense on paper. For a fraction of that cost, and in accordance to as the business grew, I was able to take that cash flow and scale it up more and more as needed, uh, I was able to come up with this. Um, or. I should say, come up with this. I was able to develop this business. Yeah, no, and for folks that are, um, you know, sort of, they're really interested, but they kind of, they may not have the, the, the capacity to, to think that they're very good at, at, at finding customers and, and doing some of the things. It has been easy for you, but you and I have begun talking, and, and you've agreed to, to make one of your locations one of the models for our new franchise that we're launching. And, um, you know, if someone were, were looking to start this business and, and needed it to be turnkey, uh, do you think franchising is something that, that might be a good opportunity for them? I think you checked out some other franchises. Uh, I did, place. you know, and I looked at some of the remediation franchises and they're a dime a dozen now. Um, Charles, you know, that's a rhetorical question, man. You know that this business, um, with all of the groundwork that you've laid out, the right equipment, the right processes, um, my background in marketing, um, and just a whole cornucopia of assets um, that could help someone instantly have a successful franchise. And I mean instantly. You know, we started uh, our Austin market in Austin, Texas last month, and this month alone, we're projected to do a tremendous amount of sales, which is basically unheard of for such a young green business. Um, and we did that overnight, literally overnight. Uh, I set it up um, in the same way that we are working these franchise, uh, this potential franchise that you have um, in mind, I, I set it up to um, sort of hopefully um, become a, a gauge to some of the work that will uh, ho hopefully tr uh, turn into some of the inspiration to the franchise model. Yeah. And as a proof of concept, boom, overnight it was up and running beyond my wildest imagination. Yeah, and so, you know, for some, some people are going to want to do this on their own. They're going to want to do it their own, the own, their own way and, and have everything their, you know, the way that they want it, uh, their own marketing, their own websites, their own everything. But, but for those of you that aren't looking uh, for you know, recreating the wheel, so to speak, the franchise model offers you a, a turnkey you know, sort of vehicle to step right into, turn that key, and start that engine and, and drive on down the road to, to financial freedom. But uh, you know, with, with any business, as Bob said, it does take work. It does take a, a, a certain amount of uh, dedication and diligence to, to be successful. But this is one of the uh, easiest ways uh, to start that revenue stream. And you don't have to do a whole, you don't have to have a whole lot of um, 
you know, background skill set to make this work? No, just um, show up on time, um, communicate, and I don't know, I can't even think of more than that. I mean, it's, it's, I, sort of, I mean, look at me for crying out loud. I, I'm not a rocket scientist. Um, Charles, on the other hand, he's, he's the well scientist. You know, so, so that's one of the things that I'd like to talk about, Bob, is when you got started with all this, I didn't know you from Adam, right? You didn't know me from Bob. I, I didn't know you from Bob, that's right. And, and yet you called me up, you know, and, and several times along the way, and did I help you? Um, yeah, you helped me. No, I'm joking, I mean, of course. Every time that you've called, I've helped you. You have. Did I charge you for that? You have not. You should have. Yeah, and, and so, you know, folks. But, I, but I think your franchise business will be a great way for you to, bet, to, to have a mutually beneficial, you know, relationship with those out there who, we, you know, are not only going to receive what they might for free, but also receive all the different tools, well, the toolbox, well, the full kit and caboodle. Well, by, by my count, we've helped over 800 people start their own successful small businesses. We've helped close to 1,500 existing businesses add new revenue streams. And it really does boil down to the, the equipment, the right equipment, and the right process. And when you've got the right equipment and you've got the right process, you've got the right know-how and the right company behind you, it really is a no-brainer to make money. So, uh, you know, we talked about your, your hardest job. What was the, what's the easiest money you ever made in this business? Um, the easiest money that I ever made in this business was a customer that wanted us to come and let them know that their house um, had an odor. So she wanted to tell you whether or not you had an odor. She asked, and I said, ma'am, um, I can give you my opinion, but we don't have a magical device that says you have an odor, you know, an odor detector, if you will. Uh, if you think it smells and you want us to remove that odor, then we can do that for you. She said, no, 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 no. I just need you to write me a letter saying that you came to my house and that you thought that it smelled. So did, you, did she pay you for that? She paid me for that. I, I didn't want to take her money, but I had to you know, justify the time spent to go out and do it. And I told her that you know, it was all on the up and up. I said, ma'am, are you sure? I mean, I don't, you know, is this is really what you need? You know, I, I, I'll so was there, was there an odor? I went there and I walked in I... and you know what Charles, there was an odor, there was. there was an odor and I wrote it down I said odor was observed at such and such address and she was very thankful and um, I swiped her credit card and we were good. <laughs> she didn't hire you to get rid of it, she didn't hire me to get rid of it, no, <laughs> she just wanted it on paper that it smelled. Well, I, people are odd and this is a... Not no different than any other business where you run into some strange characters. So we talked about the easiest job. We talked about the hardest job. But, but most of the jobs are, are sort of in between. They're not, they're not really that hard. They're not really that easy. Once you've gotten into this and you've learned how to make it all work, it's, it runs like clockwork. Yep. And uh, so you know, what, what other advice would you have to someone that's really looking to start their own business? You know, I, I think one of the best pieces of advice that I've given you and, and many other people is if you're going to start a business, it's a really good idea to play customer. Yeah, I, I think the golden rule in life is important. You know, do unto others. How's the golden rule go? The real golden rule. <laughs> as you would have them to do unto you. As you would have them do unto you. Not the, you know, the wrong golden rule, right? That's right. Do unto others as they want done to themselves. Yes. That's not the true golden rule. So, going back to what you're saying, playing customer, you know, I think to myself, if I was in their shoes, what would I want? And, and if, as long as you envision that, you're going to have great relationships with customers. They're going to be ha happy. You know, customers become friends um, all the time. They're thankful. Um, I had one couple who was desperate to get rid of um, the VOCs in their home. They had a brand new home. They were reacting to it. Um, and I, 
I charged them a fair amount um, and it worked. And they were so thankful that they provided me with a $50 gift certificate, gift certificate to go out to dinner. That's great. You know, so I, I just feel like as, as long as you keep that um, level of uh, respect for your customers, it'll come back to you tenfold. You'll be successful and everyone else will be happy as well. Now, my motto has always been under promise and over deliver. And would you say that's, that's held true for you and your business? We over promise and over deliver. Oh, great. We do both. Okay. <laughs> awesome.